Do men and women love differently? And are we doomed from the start? That's our topic here today on Man to Man. And here on our Man to Man meetings, we talk about freedom, how to love and lead with freedom in our lives and in our relationships. We want to grow as a man through relationship, through monogamous, intimate relationship with a woman. That's what we talk about here on our channel and on this call. We want the freedom to be confident within ourselves no matter what and to make the most important promises to ourselves, knowing what that is, what those are, what that means to us. And so our topic, do men and women love differently? And are we doomed from the start? We're certainly animal, the human animal. And we have our, let's say, human spirit as well, or consciousness, or God flowing through us, or the universe flowing through us, whatever words you may want to use. When I was a younger man, certainly before doing this work, so prior to 15 years ago, between 18, right, 18 and 30, I had not done any introspection on what values necessarily mean to me, right? I wanted to do the right thing, fall through on the morals that my, I suppose, parents espoused and culture and those around me and the, the sitcoms that I was watching, the shows that I was watching. So we replicate those morals, right? Or what we feel to be correct. But point being, I was much more of the human animal prior to doing this work then I would say in touch with what spirit meant to me or sacredness meant to me or really what my deep values were. I hadn't done that work yet. So I saw myself as more of kind of this human animal looking past, just doing the best I could, you know, making money, supporting my family, getting promotions as best I could, trying to do the right things, but without much introspection on myself. So the, the spirit part of me. So when we look at this question, do men and women love differently? Certainly the answer is yes, if we're only looking at the quote human animal part of ourselves. Evolutionary psychology has made this very clear, right? Women are looking for to be protected and provided for at the base. That's one thing that they want. They want a man to be bigger and stronger than them most often, not all women, right? But many women are instinctually desiring of that, turned on by that, us being bigger, stronger, not giving a shit what other people think about us, because those things are quite different than many women and femininity. Women very much care what other people and women think of them, because what does the tribe think of me? I'm much, they're much more of a social animal, let's say at their core than men who are out there throwing the fucking spear, don't care what other people think, bigger and stronger to drag home the buffalo to feed the tribe. That's more of our evolutionary psychology than a woman. So in that way, the human animal part of us, of course, yes, loves differently. But what about when we're shooting for something bigger or deeper or more sacred, let's say? And again, I'm not a religious man. I was not raised religious. I've never been religious. In fact, I just started reading uh, the King James Version of the Bible because some men that I look up to recommended that. If I were to read the Bible for my own, let's say, philosophical background, understanding, for my own knowledge, for my own education, okay, go ahead and read the King, King James Bible. And I've started to read through, and I like, it's interesting. I will say it that way. It's interesting. We can talk about that particularly another time. When we think of the sacred part of ourselves, something we want deeper and more meaningful, and I would say every man in this community and men that are attracted to this work and my work want something deeper than just okay, she's, you know, pretty and she bows down to me and I just want to make money and be, bring home the bacon and she's going to be a gold digger and that's all we care about. All we care about is looking good for the neighbors and as long as we fuck, I'm fine. That's not what men in this group tell me. They said they want a deeper connection with the woman. They want love and communication and to grow something together. And those are more spiritual concepts, right? More uh, beyond just the human animal. So what do you gentlemen think that are here? considering? Do we love differently and are we doomed from the start? Let's begin there. I certainly have more to share with you. I have excerpts from an article. I have some uh, graphics that I designed earlier today to, to talk about this subject. But what do you guys think? Do we love differently? Are we doomed from the start? I think so, especially when you're first, uh, when you're young, I think you're looking for different things, right? Uh, I remember when, uh, when I first started dating my wife, you know, we were looking more into like doing things, being active, and going out to like bush gardens, doing roller coasters, doing uh, those kind of parks, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it was a different type of relationship, I guess. As you grow, that's when you're starting to look more for the emotional con uh, connection, you know, where you're not, you know, when you're young, you know, like, you're like 18, 19, 20, right? You just, you want to have sex, right? 
as you get older, you want to make love, right? Which is different. So you're looking more for like this connection that you have with other people, right? And it's totally different. So and also depends on what kind of background you have when you were growing, right? Depends what kind of parents you have. In my position, I mean, I was never told this is what a relationship should look like, or this is what you can expect, or this is the things that you can do in order to be better or something. You know, I was pretty much raised, like you were saying, by movies, shows, and friends, right? So obviously my role models were not great. Right. You know, so I was way behind what, I don't know, uh, somebody that has more emotion, uh, emotional intelligence, I would say, you know? Um, but now this is when I'm actually beginning to find these other avenues, I guess, and other ways that I can grow and and build the emotional connection that I'm looking for now, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, I do think that they do love differently, I guess. So how would you say, are, are we doomed from the beginning because men and women have different motivations and we grow differently throughout time? Do you think we're doomed from the start? I wouldn't say doomed as long as the person is willing to be open to growth and learn new things. You know, if you're obviously, if you're mentally blocked or you just one of those that, no, I know better or uh, I don't want to learn anything or I don't want to grow. Yes, then yes, you might be doomed. You know what I mean? But if you're willing to accept people for who they are and grow within yourself about knowing about other ways that you can become connected to other people, you know, uh, no, you, you, I don't think you're doomed. You know, it's part of learning, right? In growing. Yeah, I appreciate the mindset, right? And so many men do think we're doomed. And I, in my estimation, it's because they don't know another way that they've only mm -hmm. looked at the tragedy of the car accident of the current spot in relationship. And they don't have a vision or another way or another path to potentially follow. So yeah, when we feel helpless like that, it does feel like we're doomed and we don't know what's behind the curtain. And sometimes you need the guidance, right? To show you the path. And then you can still build your own path and continue on that. But you need the guidance, you know, because if you never had any kind of guidance, then you're lost, right? It's like throw you in the middle of the woods with no compass. You don't know where to go, right? So you got to find your way. Yeah. And that's um, how I, that's how I found this work was the desire to search it. Your point, if yeah. we, if we feel like we know everything, we're not going to search. So right. I believe every man's found this work that I've met is because they had the desire to search. Yeah, and the more you find, the more you want to learn, right? Yeah, exactly. Thanks for getting us started, buddy. What do you think? Do men and women love differently? Are we doomed from the start? Um, yes and no. Should I elaborate on that? Yes, you should elaborate. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I was wondering if um, you asked him. Yeah, it's different. You know, um, I think knowledge is definitely power in this. Uh, once you kind of understand it, then I think you're no longer doomed. I think 100% right that, you know, I mean, well, I know about him himself, the same thing, same story. You know, you don't learn squat. My generation didn't learn anything when we were kids about relationships or anything. I don't, I don't know who I would have expected to teach me that, but it certainly wasn't my dad. And so, um, and he didn't model it very well either, obviously. So, you know, so you're kind of doomed if you don't stumble your way into um, knowledge at some point. And I guess the bigger problem is you don't know what you don't know until it's kind of too late in a lot of cases. Like in my case, it was definitely, um, although somehow I made it 33 years <laughs> before, you know, but it was, it probably shouldn't have made it even half that long, really. So, um, but uh, so no, but I think, you know, I feel like allow now when I, at some point I'll be ready to give it another shot, um, I, I suppose. But uh, I thought I was ready to give it another shot sometime back and I've kind of gotten extremely uh, put off by the whole dating apps and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, I've bagged it for a while and works real busy. So I'm just kind of allowing that to consume most of my time. Mm. But, uh, um, but yeah, so at this point, I don't, I don't really know. I'm kind of wandering off topic here a little bit, but um, I'm not sure at what point I'll start practicing the skills again and that sort of thing. So maybe. Yeah, I want to ask. So tell us about your life. Has it been mostly work filled or how things developed for you over the past couple of months? Yeah, you know, um, well, you know, but last time I was on, you know, the shit had kind of hit the fan at work and stuff like that. And I was, yeah. and so I've been really working on fixing all that. And it's just been a lot of false starts and wrong directions and, but, you know, some good things as well. And, um, you know, I'm, just when I think things are starting to actually kind of maybe get on track, then, you know, some other shit will blow up. And so, um, but at the same time, you know, work's really busy. 
uh, and you know, so it's not a money thing. I'm making plenty of money. I'm just not, just have not, don't have anything else. You know, I, I have no time for anything else right now. And so, but the good news is I'm actually ser fairly, fairly serious about fixing the problems once and for all. And um, I mean, you never fix them once and for all, but you know, at least getting them under control and keeping them under control for the long haul and doing what it takes to do that and realizing that I've got some ways to go to do that, but, you know, kind of setting myself a, a fairly uh, hard goal at the end of the year to get it, to get things kind of sorted out. So, do you, you know, do you mean, do you mean the structure of the business? So you're not working yeah, in the business it's structure, but, it's yeah. people, it's mostly people. Um, you know, when you're dealing with people who are, uh, um, who are kind of hourly employees in the modern market, especially younger people, it's a whole new, you know, unpleasant world. Mm. And I'm just not, um, you know, the military boss, mil former military boss doesn't get along with the, you know, millennial and Gen Z, you know, work ethic of not having one. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's, it's a fairly tough situation when most people's main goal in life is to make sure they get off work on time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, it's not everybody. It's just trying to find people who are re really, you know, willing to invest kind of a little bit of themselves and learn and potentially reap some rewards for that. But, uh, it's just a different world. And I don't know. I'm uh, yeah. but you know, it's, it's, it's a learning process. Um, can I, can I actually operate in that environment and, and be successful? Maybe we'll see. Sure. Sure. Well, uh, let me circle back to, you know, women yeah, I want way off topic now. No, that's okay. I wanted to learn about you and what life's doing. So that's cool. Don't worry about it. But yeah. So women, your thoughts on, I mean, I've heard so many men say dating apps are such a time suck and energy suck and so what's it been like there for you? What do you want to do next in terms of maybe being ready to reach out to women or be around? Yeah, I kind of, I mean, like I said, a few, maybe a couple of months ago, maybe I bagged it, just said, all right, you know, yeah. maybe not even that long ago. And, you know, I had had a couple of dates and had a couple of um, false start, you know, I'm not false starts. I mean, a couple of days, I dated one girl for a, maybe a couple of months, a little oh, bit. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. So you're holding out on us. Tell us about this girl you dated a couple of months. I, I mean, I, I, she was great. You know, I think, I think she wasn't really for me, but she was, she was, you know, definitely a, a nice person and everything. I'm just, you know, she was really kind of hot on, you know, getting into some sort of a long-term relationship and I was obviously not. And so we why is that obvious? Um, why is that not? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I guess it's obvious to me. I, 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 I was very clear with her about that, but you know, um, and she taught, we talked a bunch of times about, you know, well, how, how can this work if you're not, you know, and I was like, it, you know, it can work if you want to just kind of date and see how things, you know, spend some time together, see how things go. I mean, but I'm certainly not making any kind of promises of, uh, sure, yeah, that's super, that's super work. common. So if I may, yeah. what did you learn about yourself with her? Um, I think mainly I learned that I need to be even more clear than I thought was clear about well, about, about the not wanting long term. Pain. Yeah. You well, can't, I mean, there it's is, not that I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't telling, you know, I didn't, I wasn't like ruling it out. I just, you know, I was very clear with her. I was, hey, I'm just kind of long, you know, coming off a long term relationship and just kind of um, interested in meeting and maybe having some fun, and, you know, and, and stuff. And I mean, never got to anything like sex or anything like that. I was like, you know, for, wait, for, you dated this girl right? for a couple of months and it never got but, to like, anything but, okay, like, so golly, it's uh, fucking holding out again, man. It was a couple of, uh, it was, it was probably four or five dates over the several months. But I mean, you know, we went out and then I was gone for like two weeks on a date business trip. And then she was gone to like South Africa for two weeks during that period. So that's why it lasted so long. And that probably ultimately killed it anyway, because there just was no, you know what I mean? There's no momentum or anything able to be achieved. But hold on, slow, slow down, slow down. <laughs> so you went on five or six dates, right? Uh, maybe four, five, maybe five, five plus or minus. I think it was minus, but you get, yeah. I don't remember. It's been like three months ago, four months, five. Is this how good the conversation was when you were with her? Probably. No, <laughs> okay. no right, it was bro, good. Right. I mean, okay. was, so it was totally hold it. on, hold on. So five dates. Yeah. Did you kiss her? Yeah. Okay. And you also explained to her that, hey, I'm, I'm not interested in trying to jump into a long-term relationship. And you said, I need to be more clear. Well, actually, it's it never is going to be one-to-one -one with a woman where, oh, good. Now I understand, like a man, that you don't want a relationship. So you sounds like you were clear. I'm rushing through this because I want to get to yeah. So you were clear as you could be, which is totally normal. Uh, a healthy woman is going to yearn for relationship. So that's totally normal too. Cool. And learning about yourself. So what did you learn beyond just 
hey, I'll, we spend time apart and such and such. What did you learn? Like, all right, uh, I learned that my initial attraction for this woman was unfounded in some way, or I learned that mm. I wanted more depth than maybe she was open. I wanted more for her to open to me more than she was, or I learned that you know, physicality wasn't as important or it's easier to achieve physicality than I thought, you know, things like that. Um, I think the biggest thing I learned was that I didn't really have, I guess, the will to invest a lot of myself into a relationship okay. at that point. And so, and she, I think after a little bit since that. And so why do you think that is the, what you had? I probably, I probably wasn't and probably still am not really ready that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind dating very, very casually at this point, you know, going and hanging out, doing uh, whatever, but I'm not really interested in investing really any energy in a relationship right now. It's just too much effort you know, with everything else that I've got going on that I'm more interested in. You know, I've got other, I've got other fish to fry and, um, you know, it's, I don't know. It's just not, not, I'm not. So right now what I know about myself is I'm just not all that interested in putting a lot of effort into a relationship. So. Sure. Okay. That's fair. And yeah. so she wanted to be around you more often and yeah, she was, her. she was definitely. And, you know, and she said kind of at some point, she said, you know, I'm looking for more of a, um, of, uh, you know, somebody who's going to pursue me and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, right now that's probably not me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, okay. Um, Could you identify something that was there? I'm fishing a little. So was, is there something that you would have liked to have been there that wasn't that maybe would have motivated you to want to spend more time with her? Yeah. I mean, part of it was, I mean, she was attractive, but not probably to the point where I was just kind of, she, I wasn't into her enough to, you know, put in exceptional effort, I guess. And which made me kind of feel bad about myself a little bit, but it just was a fact. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, that's a, that's an interesting topic for another time too. When a woman is, if we're head over heels for a woman, we often pedestalize her. Yeah. And then we kind of lose our own self. So, but, so you, you kissed her. Was, was the physicality fun for you? Did you find? Yeah, it was good. You know, yeah, it was good. It was, uh, it was definitely, um, I don't know how much, you know, I, it, it showed, but it was definitely in, my mind intimidating because it's just not, I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a, some 35 plus years out of practice. And so, um, uh, but you know, it, it happened and it seemed to go well. I mean, you know, she didn't seem to complain too much. So <laughs> she, only, she only complained a little bit. No, nah, yeah. She didn't complain. I'm just okay. but, um, no, I think, I think it was good. Um, but okay. like I said, I wasn't, um, I mean, in the moment it was good, you know, but after, you know, the next, um, next day I was like, ah, you know, I'm just, uh, I was just having that internal kind of conflict of, I'm not really into it. I don't know if I really want to, you know, go much farther with this because I'm just not that into a, the sure. relationship. So that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. I thought, <laughs> good. Sorry. You know, it's, no, I, I don't I, apologize. I it's really more of, I was feeling it. I was just, I was just say, I'm feeling into the, it's almost like you kind of handicap yourself. Like, we're, like you're trying to play a game of golf and every couple of minutes, you're like, you know, I'm really not that good at golf. So just like recognize I have a high, oh, yeah. like you don't well, even I don't think it's handicapping myself. I think it's recognizing the fact of the, of the situation. Okay. That's so. fair. Yeah, that's fair. So you do, but you don't want to practice much more now. So let me, let's segue back into kind of this, which yeah, is, I do want to say that I, I do want to practice at okay. some point. I just don't really want to do it right now. Okay. Totally cool. I just had that conversation with two other guys today, actually, in business, their own business, their own career. You know, we want to feel solid and stable in our career and in our income as a man before we spend time with a woman. And I think we also instinctually know, either consciously or instinctually know, that we're going to be more attractive to women if we're solid in our own career and in our money and things like that. So that's completely fair. And the, where I'm going here with this conversation is more of a sacred type of relationship. So you want, you're, you're a relationship kind of guy, like most of us, I would say, right? That's something that you felt bad because you didn't want a relationship with this woman. So it sounds like, you know, that you do want a relationship. Is that true? I don't, I don't, I don't even know if I know that. I don't, I don't okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know that I know that right now that I, I really want, um, because my, my ex is, you know, it's like, Hey, would you like to have dinner with me sometime? Just a couple of days ago, she just out of the blue. And I'm like, no, <laughs> oh so, no. okay this is like the second or third time she circled back around and asked something like that. yeah but you know i'm sure so no why'd you say no i mean i did i i wasn't mean about it i just told her i said i'm not really kind of ready to do that just yet i want to i don't really want to re-engage with her until i'm comfortable 
with her, with seeing her as a person who is with somebody else. Um, I don't. As in I, she's dating someone else? Or? No, no. I mean, I don't know. She might be for all I know. I don't know. But um, I just, I find that still somewhat painful and I'm just putting a time kind of putting, letting, letting some time exist between, you know, so what's painful. I missed it. What's painful. Just, the, you know, the, just thinking of her, you know, dating somebody else or being with somebody else and that sort of thing. I, I find that, you know, something I just don't really want to be around well, right sure. now. Sure, You're with her for 33 years, right? You said? Yeah. And so I want to let that fade a little bit to where I can be more comfortable with that knowledge or that fact. And then I'm like, okay, I think with, you know, doing stuff with her and, because, you know, I don't necessarily want to deprive my daughter of having, you know, I, I don't want to create a situation where I don't want ever her, you know, me and her mom to be with her at the same time and create that problem where she has to choose and stuff like that. But right now it's not an issue um, with my daughter. And so right now I'm just you, you know, letting the time, just letting the time pass a little bit before I start mm -hmm. hanging out with her, if, if ever, really, I feel mm -hmm. like I want to do that. So. Well, next, some other call when I see you again, whenever that may be, I'll, I like to ask you about that. Like, because I don't know that you'll ever feel completely nothing, no pain around this pretty tragic thing that's happened in your life as far as the relationship and divorce. And so I don't know asking yourself to feel no pain at all. Plus, also, we it's impossible to process pain unless we bring, bring ourselves to the precipice. So maybe being with other women is a way to process your own understanding yeah. of who you are. but to ask yourself to feel completely mm, solid around this before seeing her, if you do want to see her, is kind of a tough ask, I, I think. Maybe so. Um, I mean, I, I see that. And I, you're, you know, as time goes by, it doesn't seem to be getting, um, you know, it doesn't get necessarily easier. But um, I'm also at the same time, not really exposed to, um, you know, the actual, you know, current fact of her doing whatever the hell she's doing. And so, you know, so that, that in a little ways, maybe it's a cop out, but I'm just, you know, if I'm not exposed to it, I don't really think, think about it. And I'm doesn't really, um, is that a way to say that you're in denial that she's maybe, other men? yeah, maybe, I mean, okay. She's I, seeing other I, men. I, I mean, I'm not in denial of the fact. I mean, I know it's probably happening. I right. just don't want to know about it. And sure. So, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. So, yeah. and you know, and I really, I mean, you know, at some level, I wish her to find what she's looking for. You know, I don't want her to be unhappy or anything like that. So um, I just don't necessarily want to be around it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, neither would I. Right. Neither would I. So, hey, kudos for you for dating. I didn't know that. I had that's the first that I heard that you actually uh, went on some dates and things like that. Yeah, it was it was a, it was a brief. It was a brief. And then, you know, the the the, the, the chats on the apps and stuff that about 90 percent of which right. um, they just disappear at some right. point. Totally. And, uh, yeah. But going on five this dates. This is just so not worth my time. So yeah, the dating app thing, but going with on five dates with a woman is, you know, not insignificant. So good for you. Yeah, it was, you know, it was definitely, I enjoyed it. I I, I didn't, it, to a certain extent, I didn't like the stress of having to figure out what to do and all that stuff again. And so, although it turned out, I didn't try, have to try that hard. She seemed to be like everything I came up with, which I thought was like, oh, this is kind of lame, but let's do it anyway. She was like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Like, what yeah, the heck? It, it, it's, we way overthink shit as guys. Like you really, if you try, you know, one half or one quarter of as hard as you think you need to, it's, you know, the effort is, can be there. The idea can be there. It's more about the, the concept of fun and adventure than it is trying to plan a million different things. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's my experience. So yeah. Good. Good to see you. Appreciate it. I saw you post in the chat. You want a friend, but you don't want a romantic relationship. I mean, I think that's what yeah. everybody's discovering, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I've seen you before. Have you been on a call before? Um, I haven't been on this uh, this particular call. No, I'm, I'm fairly new to the community. Um, and uh, I, I had a little time. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, but yeah, I had a little time and, and saw the notification. I was like, oh, let me hop on the call. Yeah, so, glad that uh, you're here. Yeah. Glad that you're here. Sure. So my, my prompt for today, and I haven't gotten into all the slides that I could. I always prepare more than I really get into, just to say no. But as far as uh, the prompts, do men and women love differently? And are we doomed from the start? And I said, well, the, the human animal part of us, the evolutionary psychology would, would tell us that, yes, we love differently, right? We have different desires. But what about uh, a deeper or more sacred relationship? That's, that's the topic, really. And do you think that we're doomed from the start because we're unaware of what a sacred relationship might be or a deeper relationship might be? How does that topic connect with you? Um, I guess, 
you know, the, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is that uh, I believe that men and women equally want a deep connecting relationship, um, that, that that is not a feminine quality, that it's not a masculine quality, that it's a, just a human quality. Um, but I mean, it, I think the challenge, uh, you know, drawing from my own life is, is that, um, realizing that and, and, um, expressing that in a way that the other person, um, can, um, you know, can feel that, can, can understand that and, and that you find that, that, connection together i think that's that's where the challenge lies yeah that's really that's really well said so do you may I ask do you have an example of how you're trying to bring that into your life or what's going on in your relationship right now yeah i guess um maybe just a quick uh overview of myself yeah, uh, so i am i'm now three weeks into a healing separation with my wife um, we've been married for a little over 12 years and um i've struggled a lot over the last like two two and a half years or so to to kind of I guess you could say like reinvent ourselves. We kind of had a uh, falling out kind of kind of thing, and it's just been kind of a battle to to recover and kind of move forward. Um, done a lot of work. Each of us have done a lot of work, but I guess this healing separation is is really kind of the you know the last ditch effort to get uh, get us where we need to be. Now I say all that, and then and then I also you know temper that with like it's been just being in this state of separation has has given me a lot more clarity into okay here's here's what i haven't been doing for myself here's what i you know need to be doing for myself and you know a recognition that okay i got to do work um, independent of her so that i can bring that strength into the marriage um and so yes i'm grateful to have found this community because that seems to be the mantra around here so yeah uh, the the idea of we're not here to save your marriage we're here to save you and you know the, the marriage can benefit from that um you know that's, yeah that's right that's, that's right really so where would you, yeah thank you that's right where would you say that your edge is with your work right now with your own work where my edge is what do you mean well, where do you find the you're becoming aware of what's most challenging for you or what you were unawares of previously um i guess for me um <clears throat> I mean, I, I guess I the rabbit hole that got me to this community was uh, counseling that I had had where I was introduced to the No More Mr. Nice Guy book and and you know just the overall temperaments everything about that book kind yeah. of resonated with me and and started seeking out you know a, a group um, to to discuss it and um, and that's how I found uh, mentoring men um, and so the the things that really kind of resonate the most with me is just um, kind of fear, anxiety, shame that have really kind of permeated my life and, and influenced the relationship a lot, uh, really harmed the relationship a lot because it's, you know, those, those things have driven, um, have driven a lot of my, um, my behaviors or my, a lot of my actions and, and inactions, um, in the relationship. And, um, there's, you know, there's codependency that has, you know, has formed over time, uh, with my wife and I, and I, I've just, I've kind of lost a sense of self, uh, in, you, know, you, you mentioned earlier, like we, we lose a sense of ourselves, uh, and it's like, oh yeah, I, that's uh, becoming more and more aware of that every day. Um, so, so I guess that's, that's kind of where, I don't know. So what are you excited to learn about yourself or grow within yourself right now? Um, well, I, I, so I went through the, the failing marriage plan first. Uh, and then I, I just started the renewed masculine man, mm -hmm. um, material. And, um, the thing that I wrote on the, um, like the gearing up thing was, um, really my main goal right now is, is a detachment of my feelings and emotions from, from other people's, especially my wife in my like very first introduction in the, in the community. I, I, the way that I described it is that I've let like her feelings and her emotions kind of fill my sails and, um, and steer my ship. And I was actually telling my wife this, uh, last week and, and she, she used, uh, wording that actually resonated with me more. She said, well, it, it seems to me that you've kind of let it fill your sails and, um, and often sink your ship. 
and <laughs> you know, not, not just steer my ship. Yeah, when you off. fire cannonballs, I've allowed them to, to pierce the hull, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And um, and so you know what that what that has done for me is it's you know left me as kind of a shell of myself, uh, and and unable to you know kind of have my own my own identity in a lot of cases, my own feelings and thoughts and and that kind of thing. But then it's also prevented me from really being present for her, uh, mm -hmm. because you know, I'm, I'm almost, you know, adopting her emotions or letting her emotions influence me so much that I can't be there as a, as a support for her. Um, it's like, I just get dragged in whatever direction she's going, as opposed to being a, like a solid firm foundation that she can collapse on if she needs to, that she can, um, hug if she needs to just being like almost statuesque, uh, and, and her being able to just, um, you know, be there with me. I, I just I'm like putty yeah. with her. Yeah. I totally know what you mean. Um, what you were just saying there reminds me. So I'm, I'm certainly all about easy ways to practice what we're, where we're wanting to go. And what flashed in my mind is now I'm aware that when I'm listening to my woman and I'm kind of frozen, my face is frozen, almost like I'm holding my breath, awaiting for the next stimulus and how to respond to that. So when my face is frozen and my, I'm not breathing deeply, I'm sort of reliant on the other person to lead me into where I'm going to go next here. I'm following almost. And yeah. in that state, I've noticed I'm you very, that. yeah, in that state, I'm very reactionary. Like, what do you mean? Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's my fault. You know, that kind of thing. All of a sudden, <laughs> I can just react. But when I'm relaxed and I'm able to have a little smile on my face, you know, I feel my face relaxed. I'm focused on my breathing. In that case, my first piece of awareness is myself. My, my, my first item of business is, let's say, my breathing and my relaxation. And therefore, there's a, it's much easier to have a space between what the person might say and my reaction, because I'm really focused more on my breathing and relaxing my face. And something yeah. as simple as that has been such a huge key for me to be aware. She may not even be talking yet. I mean, I'm in the room with her yet. But if I'm able yeah. to enter the room, relax my face, breathe deeply, that gives me such a big space in between you know, yeah. reacting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the physiological response to everything is so um, fascinating to me. Um, and, you know, that we one of the reasons why we ended up and it, it was actually it was actually a mutual agreement um, that that we did this. Um, I think we both kind of came to the realization at the same time. I've got a whole story around that, but that's too long for for now. But um, uh, where was I? Um, now I lost my train of thought. Um, the physiological <laughs> response. Yeah. Oh, the physiological. Yeah. So one of the one of the reasons that we even did this was was to for both of us to get regulated. My wife gets elevated, and and I uh, I withdraw. It's like a vicious yeah. cycle, a common cycle. I I, I know. Right. Um. But but we were just so dysregulated. Um. And and so that that was that was one of the one of the reasons why. And and I described it to her like there's there's times where like we've got three kids. Um. And uh, there's times where she'll be in the other room, like I'm in one room, she's in the other room with one of the kids mm. talking about who knows what, but she'll say something to them in a certain tone. And I can't even hear like what the words are, but, but if she says it in a certain tone, like it sends tinglies like down my, down my body. It's like such a, such a response to, to her. And that's, that's one of my main goal is to get disconnected from that because it's not healthy for me. It's not healthy for her or, you know, not healthy and not, not helpful for her at all, especially when, when it's something where she's talking to me and, you know, we're like in conflict or whatever. It's just a, a disaster. Yeah, um, I hear you. I hear you. There's, there's so much more we could talk about. I'm happy to talk, you know, another time yeah, more sure. if you want to reach out or if you're on another call. I, I think every single one of us understands what you're going through. So I appreciate yeah. it. Hey, good to see you, Jeff. No, with, uh, with respect to the topic of the, this discussion, I do believe that men and women love differently. Mm. And uh, I don't believe that men can ever feel what woman, a woman feels when she is in love. Because the whole sensation of a woman being in love is governed by her levels of oxytocin. And a woman's levels of oxytocin are much, much higher than any man's level. Men do not really have that much oxytocin. We biologically do not. And the whole sensation of being in love or falling out of love, what a woman experiences, no man can really understand that because we do not have any equivalent hormones for that. 
So, and that is why you will find that most of the time it is the woman who is initiating the divorce because her oxytocin levels have declined for months or years. A man does not feel it that much because his levels are never that high to begin with because that's not our biology. So, <laughs> it's just something to keep in mind. I mean, it's, yeah, I, uh, I agree. I, I certainly agree with all those biological factors. Right? And <laughs> there's there's fields of study. Behaviorism, for for instance, is what I focused on in the school system when I worked with kids with disabilities and at risk youth and things. And there's certainly more of a humanist approach to consider the emotional ebbs and flows and ramifications. And there's to consider the cycles of life and things. And I totally agree with the biological view of what you said. Oh, yeah. Just uh, my two cents, that's all. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. And that's a great springboard in our last couple of minutes here to share uh, a few pieces of an article that I found today that I really like. So what's beyond just biology or beyond behaviorism? right? Like I'm training a dog. I mean, certainly those things apply to the human animal as well, but we're larger than that, I believe, right? We're, we're more sacred than that. We want to we want to understand our emotions and again, how we move through life in these different stages. So there's different pieces to consider. But as far as a sacred relationship, and again, that's not a religious connotation, but how do we grow something where we're considering beyond only ourselves? And here's a few excerpts from this article by uh, the Shelley Bullard here, and here's the website, Mind Body Green, if you want to look at the actual full article. So here's some quotes from the article. A sacred relationship is a relationship in which we are inspired to see the divine in another person. And what divine means to you could be very unique to you. To see what is divine in another person, to experience oneness through the union of two. Sacredness is felt experience. It's a knowing deep within, a knowing of who you really are. So that's a lot of words, knowing who you really are. What does that mean? Well, we would say in this work, our values, our integrity, how when we turn our shoulders toward a woman, who are we there? Not trying to appease her or pedestalizing her as we've been talking about, right? Not losing ourselves within her emotions, but being within our own selves through the practice of consciousness and breath and groundedness through our own values and such in this work. And when we turn our shoulders toward the world, we know what our skills are and the man that we want to be and cultivate in the world. We're not just flailing, right? We're not closing our eyes and throwing the spear. We're hunting the buffalo in a knowledgeable way, looking for others to lead us as well. So that's what I would say knowing who you are means, right? That's very esoteric. But sacredness is a felt experience. Here's another excerpt. We become ready for this sacred relationship at, the, at a very peculiar time in our lives. A time when we awaken to the sacredness within ourselves, when you come to realize that you're not just a body, that you are in fact the essence of love and truth, a deep desire to know yourself as love and to experience love in your relationships comes forth. And so the desire for a sacred relationship is born. Again, a lot of words. Again, I'm not a religious man, but this sounds pretty familiar, right? That you are the essence of love and truth. So I believe that love is something that we can compound and multiply without cost that we can love in the world. And sure, there's cost to living and surviving and all those things. But I can choose to show love, have love in my body when I shop for groceries, when I go to the gym, for instance, when I drive in my car, I can choose to be within an essence of love. And I think that that then therefore has the chance to expand that type of energy in the world without cost. So that's how I look at love is that we can expand it. So what does that mean? essence of love and truth. Well, that's the beginnings to me that I can choose to have that in my body, in my soul, in my essence, when I'm moving throughout the world, and that it, that will spread that love. If you're not experiencing sacredness, connection, and fulfillment in your life, the place to look, or I would say the place to begin to look, is not in another person, it's within yourself, we believe here in this work. And finally, we see sacredness when we're embodying sacredness. We see wholeness, love, fulfillment, and completion when we're embodying these qualities ourself. And we see separation, limitation, competition, and contempt when we're embodying those things within ourselves. You see through the eyes of what you are. Say so you see through the eyes of what you're currently embodying, right? From what's coming from within. What have we shoved down and ignored in the past? That shit comes back to haunt us, usually at times that are not very convenient. So in the chat here, the answer in part lies in the fact that we are all here and that we didn't figure it out in time that we love differently. Yeah, and I, I would agree with that as well. And that it was saying we love differently, saying in a different way that we love differently. I've loved different women differently. In Greek history, there's many words for love. The Greeks had many different words for the way that we love and how we show love. If you haven't identified who you really are, such that your partner can experience that, it will be much harder for them to find the divine in you. Exactly. We've got to begin with ourselves. Appreciate you guys being here.